Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to the first news video of the new year. We're excited to jump back into the news with y'all, so let's go ahead and get started. Banks around the world were closed at the beginning of the week to ring in the new year, so you haven't missed anything yet. In fact, we'll be covering our first news event tomorrow because CHF CPI numbers are coming out late tonight here in the US. Also on Wednesday, we have US dollar ISM manufacturing PMI as well as Jolt's job openings. And then later on in the afternoon, US FOMC meetings minutes will come out. Thursday, we'll see US non-farm employment change, but Friday is the biggest news day of the week. Friday, we'll see new unemployment rate data for both Canada and the US. All right, so here we are checking out the edge finder. I'm gonna start off here in the market heat map. First edge finder analysis of the new year. Here in the market heat map, we're taking a look at our biggest movers of the day. We have all of our assets listed here. Our currency pairs, our major indices, more currency pairs down here. We have US dollar up top, and then we have all assets listed in these boxes right here. So we're looking at how uh, all of these different assets have moved either towards the upside or towards the downside so far today. So for our uh, US dollar pairs, I can see that NZD USD is our biggest mover to the downside side so far down 1.17% on the day so far, whereas USD CHF is up 1.1% on the day so far. I can see here that our major indices US 30 or excuse me, that's the JP225 has had absolutely no movement at all. US 30, S&P 500, and NASDAQ 100 are down on the day so far, so US indices not performing very well, but global indices, the German 30 and UK 100, are mo uh, moving towards the upside. Here in our all assets box, I can actually see that with UK 100 up here at the top at 1.32%, that is our biggest mover to the upside so far today. Our Euro pairs are leaning towards the downside for the most part. Euro USD down 0.92% and Euro NZD only up 0.29%. Uh, are you interested in our market scanning software, the Edge Finder? You can try it today for free. Click the link in the description and fill out the form letting us know you're interested in the software. A member from our team will contact you with trial access information. The Edge Finder has brand new features like price forecast and economic news. There has never been a better time to try out the software for yourself. Click the link in the description and try it out for free today. Our pound pairs are kind of split. Euro uh, GBP down 0.56%, but GBP NZD is up 0.85%. Uh, our, our yen pairs are pretty much all leaning towards the downside, except for USD JPY, which uh, is up only 0.05%, but NZD JPY down 1.12% on the day so far. So yeah, pretty much all of our yen pairs shooting towards the downside. CHF pairs is the opposite. Pretty much all of our CHF pairs are shooting towards the upside, except CHF JPY, which is down 1.07% on the day so far, but USD CHF again up 1.1%. Lastly, we have Australian dollar pairs and New Zealand dollar pairs, both looking pretty split, both looking very identical, actually, uh, with Aussie US and NZD US, uh, NZ, Aussie USD and NZD USD being the biggest movers to the downside so far. Aussie US down 0.86% uh, and NZD USD down 1.17%. GBP AUD up 0.67% uh, and GBP NZD up that 0.85% on the day so far. So let's go ahead and check out the watch list too so we can take a look at our buy and sell signals. I'm going to remove our neutral assets and we're left with this nice list of buys and sells a lot of sells pretty sell heavy but we do have strong buys and we do have strong sells so usd cad and nzd cad coming out as our strongest buys score of plus seven and plus six and then gbp nzd aussie nzd and gbp usd are all strong sells all with scores of minus six so i think we're going to take a look at usd cad get updated on that us dollar information as well as that Canadian dollar information, we'll have unemployment uh, rate data coming out for both of those uh, currencies, for both of those countries, rather, uh, at the end of the week. But our strongest buy of the day with a score of plus seven is in fact USD CAD. We can see here our COT data is a score of plus two and our retail sentiment is a score of plus one. So we will take a look at those numbers right over here in our sentiment section, US dollar COT data or institutional trader data has the US dollar coming in at 67.17% long and 32.83% short. So 
institutional traders showing a slight, uh, slightly, slightly heavy favoritism on the long side. And the same thing can be seen here for the Canadian dollar, 32.9% long, 67.10% short. So again, showing that slightly heavy favoritism on the short side for the Canadian dollar. Retail sentiment, on the other hand, 28% long and 72% short. So retail traders are uh, pretty heavily favorited short on the pair overall. Our seasonality is a score of plus one. So here we are over in January. We can see that our last 10 year average has it sitting above this zero neutral line right here. But our last five years average has it below that line. So what this means is historically speaking over the last 10 years, uh, this pair has performed a little bit better um, than it starts the month out as once it finishes the month. But in the last five year averages, that has not been the case. Currently, I mean, we're, we're only three days into the year so far, but currently doing better than it started up just a little bit. We can see moving into February that there does tend to be a pretty drastic rise in the uh, price of USD CAD uh, according to the last five year average. And that was the same for the last 10 year average. So historically speaking, uh, this pair tends to uh, continue to shoot up from January into February. Our trend reading is a score of plus one. And we can see that we've had some downward momentum in December, but here starting off in January, again, a little bit of downward momentum, but in the last couple of days, it's kind of evened out and our price forecast believes based on these different metrics here, fundamentally speaking and sentiment wise, that this pair will continue or start trending uh, in an upward direction rather. Uh, and lastly, our fundamentals, GDP growth, inflation, unemployment, and interest rates. We have scores of uh, plus one, plus one, and plus one for GDP growth, unemployment, and interest rates. And inflation is our loan minus one score right here. Let's check out those fundamental numbers. US dollar GDP growth, 3.2% compared to Canada's 0.7%. US unemployment, 3.7% compared to Canada's 5.1%. U.S. inflation currently sitting at 7.1% compared to Canada's 6.8% and U.S. interest rates are 4.5% compared to Canada's 4.25%. So sentiment wise, uh, we, we're seeing some bullishness from institutional traders on the U.S. dollar. Uh, retail traders are shorting the pair, so that means that we typically go long there. Uh, our seasonality does show that historically speaking that this pair continues or does uh, quite well in the beginning of the month. Um, our trend reading is predicting a shift and a move to the upside. And fundamentally speaking, it is pretty bullish with uh, our three uh, metrics in the blue and just inflation, our loan metric in the red. James had mentioned in the pre-stream a little bit of some of the watch list pairs. Let's actually do some analysis on them a little bit more in depth here. Um, you got a lot of pound pairs on the downside. And I want to show you all pound yen, which might actually be setting up here today. So pound yen, um, here's your, here's your one hour chart. Let's pull this up. If you're more of a day trader, right? This might actually be an interesting point for the day traders out there. Uh, pound yen, pull back here to the 50% retracement and actually even trying out here to see how this candle closes will be very interesting. So you're looking at pound yen, which has been trending well to the downside to start out the year. We've seen a bit of a recovery here. Um, and as we tag that 50% retracement at 156.88, the pound yen uh, is tapping resistance at the 50% and uh, structure looking left. So I would say if you are if you are short bias in the pound yen, it'll be very interesting to see how this candle closes. And, and you can see rejection coming into this candle <clears throat> as we speak. Does that mean that the pound yen can't rally higher? No, the pound yen could, but this is why we use stop losses. I and mean, when we have a trade idea, it is an idea. It's not a guarantee. We're not certain about anything. And I think, you know, as you start out the new year, don't overestimate your ability on the charts. In fact, you should probably uh, underestimate to a degree each setup that you take. And what I mean by that is, of course, trade confidently, but don't trade arrogantly. So if you take a trade and you're looking at pound yen, you're saying, okay, um, yeah, this thing, if this candle closes bearish, then maybe I'll take a stab at taking a sell trade. Uh, if that's if that's what you choose to do, 
still acknowledge the fact that things could go wrong, right? Things could shoot to the upside. And what are you going to do about it? If you're risking 50% on your account, you're going to be out of here before February even gets here. Don't let that be you guys. Trade smart, trade small, and don't overestimate your ability, right? I don't, I've been trading this, uh, this is going to be my seventh year of trading the markets. Um, and every year, I have been more and more conservative in my approach. It's been such an important thing for me to learn over the years is the less arrogantly you trade, generally speaking, the better you trade. Arrogance in trading is a account blower. It is absolutely true. Um, so looking at this 50% mark, again, uh, I like it on the short side, looking for a continuation to the downside. And let's take a quick look at the fundamentals a bit, see what smart money is doing on the pound yen. Let's get a quick read of the room. And again, pound yen across the room, getting a sell bias. We'll go to the uh, minor currency crosses. And we'll scroll down here and find GBP, JPY. I'm pulling this up. This is going to give us an overall view of the chart. Uh, so again, of course, you can look at the chart and get some information, but you can also look at the fundamentals and the sentiment analysis delivered by the edge finder to get a full picture. And what we can see is we have a negative five score and that score equates to a sell bias on the edge finder. And what we can see is all of the different categories broken down here for you. So you have COT data, retail sentiment, seasonality, trend reading, GDP growth, inflation, unemployment, and interest rates. All these factors contribute to the directional bias that we have on a particular asset. So in this case, GJ, um, you know, COT data is a bit mixed. It points more towards buying the pound than the yen. So that goes against us. That is more of a bullish indicator. But retail sentiment, look at this, you guys. The crowd is 84% long on the pound against the Japanese yen. The trading crowd, which tends to lose money, unfortunately, is super packed into a buy trade on this. And so if we know that, that's going to be a bias more to go the other way and be on the sell side, right? So at least that's how I look at it. If you know that the retail traders tend to lose money, you know, brokerages put that data out there that traders, that, that clients consistently overall lose money. If we know that information, then I'm not going to be chasing the same trades that they are. So with that information, then I'm going to also take a look at the next category, seasonality. The month of January, as we see right here, tends to be a negative month for the pound against the Japanese yen. That's vital information knowing these two things by itself. But then we can keep going down the list. Trend to the downside, that's pretty obvious. We get negative two in that category. GDP growth, inflation, and unemployment. These are fundamental economic numbers that do impact the value of the currency cross. All point towards selling the pound and buying the Japanese yen. Unemployment, inflation, and GDP all point towards favoring the yen. Interest rates do in fact favor the pound, but for the most part, we get a net score of negative five, gives us a confirmation to be on the sell side primarily based on what the edge finder is saying. Of course, you do what you want. The edge finder is just a scanner, but this is how we use the edge finder each day. So we're looking for this and, and this is looking to set up pretty nicely. We've got 10 minutes left on this hourly candle. We've got edge finder bias to the downside. We've got technical analysis looking pretty good here to the downside. All sounds good. And so that might actually be a trade setup, right? So if you don't already have the edge finder, if you want to try it out, we do have a free trial available. Just, just grab it, try it out if you haven't already. It's, it's free to try. Um, so we'll drop that link in the chat uh, and you guys can fill that form out. One of our team members will reach out to you and actually get you set up with the edge finder if that's something that you're interested in using in your own trading. We have many, many traders. We have over a thousand people using the edge finder on a consistent basis. Uh, and I would encourage you, if you have not already tried it, try it. See if it's something that would work for you here. It has really changed a lot of, uh, you know, my team as well as many, many traders are using this thing consistently. You know, hundreds and hundreds of people are using it on a daily basis for a reason. We've worked really hard on it. So check it out if you haven't already. Click that link. And GJ is on the list. So I like GJ here at the 50% on the sell side. Let's move on, see what else we can find. All right. So the, I already kind of briefly mentioned like what I'm looking at for the dollar, right? So I'll say it again. But basically what I'm looking at here on the dollar is that we are in an interesting spot, right? And what I mean by that is the dollar has come down, right? We, we know we've been bearish on the dollar for a little while now, right? As they're as they're slowing down these interest rate hikes, as inflation starts to become a bit more tame in the U.S. Um, and, and then also as we start to have some recession fears, we're starting to see the dollar 
kind of moved down at, as we've seen in the past um, couple of months. But now we're seeing that momentum slow down, right? We're not seeing that strong bearish impulse. We're not seeing this type of move here on the dollar where we just shoot down with massive volatility. What we're seeing is this kind of grinding, you know, downside momentum, which seems to be potentially coming to a halt. And then if we look here on the daily, you know, could we look at this as a potential double bottom here that we kind of just did, right? So we have one distinct bottom and then we have two distinct bottoms and we have a nice bullish impulse off of that low. And what's interesting about this low is that this exact same level was also demand here before the rally up to the upside there back in uh, June of 2022. And then if we go as far back here as December of 2016, this was the, the market highs for the DXY back then before making a rally to the downside. So there's a lot of confluence on this level, right? There's a lot of confluence on this level. There's a lot of previous interest on this level. And anytime you have a level like that, you can expect some kind of reaction. And, and that's what we are seeing here on the dollar to start the new year. So now the question is, is this bullish momentum going to be sustained? Could we start to see a bit of a rally here on the dollar, right? Could we start to make some bullish momentum and maybe we can rally up into these highs up here? And this doesn't mean that the dollar is going to be king again. This doesn't mean that the dollar is going to, you know, rip back up to all time highs, but it would make sense from just the technical perspective to maybe even do a retest of some of this uh, demand here or some of this supply up here before then getting a move to the downside again. So whether you're overall bearish or bullish on the dollar, you have to factor in a potential move to the upside. And that's kind of why I like looking at the dollar to the upside, right? I like, I like looking at the dollar to the upside more than I like looking at the dollar to the downside, just because I think there's more to offer to the upside, right? There's more risk to reward. So that doesn't mean I'm just going to jump into a trade though. I need to wait for the right conditions. And I thought that may happen this morning as we were breaking through these highs, but then we deviated back below those highs and now we're trading back inside this range. So right now, um, I'm not going to be touching the dollar, right? I'm just going to be waiting for us to create some sort of bullish structure. If we could put in some sort of support, reclaim these highs, right? Then I can start looking at uh, potential dollar upside in the form of uh, some of the USD cross pairs. <clears throat> what concepts do I use? Just simple supply and demand tech, just support resistance. Um, I do use the edge finder for confluence. I use the Fibonacci for confluence. But if you want to see my exact strategy, you can check out my channel. S&P 500, we'll look at that. We'll look at USD CAD. AUD CAD. Hey, Jake, what do you think of using multiple objective strategies? It came to the conclusion that legit strategies make 70 to 100% a year. 70 to 100% a year is, is, is a lot, Kejbu. That's a lot. 70 to 100 percent a year on average right you're not just talking about a one-off year you, you know if you say 70 to 100 percent a year is are you referring to doing that over many many years because that would be an incredible strategy so if you can actually do that then you should just do that make sure you guys check out the links in the description if you need broker recommendations access to our free discord or want to chat with us on telegram if you're interested in our trading software the edge finder you can find that in the description as well thanks for watching